Hey folks, Philly Boy J back here with another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my Thanksgiving turkey. This turkey is about 13 pounds. Before you do anything to your turkey, you have to make sure that your turkey is at room temperature. So you want to defrost your turkey. What you're going to do is you're going to place your turkey on your kitchen counter or in the refrigerator and allow it to defrost for about three to four days. That should be enough time to defrost any size turkey. There are some things that we're going to be removing from the cavity of the turkey. We're going to be removing the turkey neck. And we're going to just set that aside momentarily. I'm going to be using the turkey neck later to make my homemade turkey gravy. We're going to also remove that excess fat there. We're not going to be using that. Yuck. You want to turn your turkey over on its back. And you see that long piece of fat right there. Some people use that and they pin that against the turkey so that whatever they're stuffing their turkey with don't slide out. But we're going to be removing that because I don't stuff my turkey with stuffing, okay? In the back, there's going to be a package. And inside that package is going to be some gizzards and other turkey pieces. We're going to be using those pieces to create our turkey broth, okay? This is how you make homemade turkey gravy. I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my homemade turkey gravy a little later on. Now, when it comes to cleaning my turkey, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt onto my turkey. And I clean my whole turkey the same way that I clean chicken and steak and every other meat that you guys have seen me clean. Okay, so we're going to just sprinkle some salt on the turkey. And rub it really well with some water. Just to make sure that we remove any residue or funk okay so we're also going to be rinsing off the other pieces as well the gizzards the turkey neck and you want to make sure that you remove any clear slimy stuff from the sides of the turkey inside the crevices of the turkey just like you see in your chicken you want to remove that stuff okay you do not want that in your turkey that's unhealthy and it's disgusting So here are the vegetables that I'm going to be using for my Thanksgiving turkey recipe. And that's three green peppers and two onions. You can use whatever vegetables that you like to use. We're going to be using a Reynolds oven bag and some flour. Guys, I've been putting my turkey in this for years. And it makes sure turkey so tender and juicy and moist. And it also cuts the cooking time. You do not have to roast your turkey that long when you use the oven bag. For my turkey rub, the seasonings that I'm going to be using are garlic powder, thyme leaves, rosemary, seasoning salt. you got to use sage. Sage on turkey. I don't know why everybody don't put sage on that turkey. It really takes it to another level. Onion powder and black pepper. You can use whatever kind of seasonings you want to use. But I found that these combinations of seasonings work the best for turkey. Trust me, it really gives it an awesome, delicious flavor. No other combination of seasonings tastes better than these combinations. You're going to also need some butter for the skin and for the gravy. And some chicken stock. Now, for the turkey rub, we're going to be adding two tablespoons of seasoning salt one tablespoon of garlic powder one tablespoon of onion powder we're going to be using one tablespoon of sage as well um that's what's going to give it that that thanksgiving taste and that thanksgiving aroma have your kitchen smelling like thanksgiving we're going to be using a teaspoon of pepper a teaspoon of thyme and a teaspoon of rosemary leaves. Some people like to use all types of herbs. They use oregano, parsley, everything that you can think of, okay? But I'm only going to be using rosemary and thyme. And we're going to stir that up 
and that's what we're going to be using to season our Thanksgiving turkey. You're going to add two big tablespoons of butter to this little bowl here. And you're going to place it in the microwave and you're going to microwave it for a minute to a minute and a half until the butter is completely melted. And I'm going to begin seasoning my turkey. And it's really important that you also season the insides and the crevices of the turkey. So make sure that you season the insides of the turkey as well. Like I'm doing there, rubbing the turkey rub all inside the turkey and in the cavity of the turkey. Now I'm going to be marinating this turkey for a couple days now some people like to brine their turkey and do all that other stuff i really think that that's just doing too much um i'm not against people doing it i just don't feel like you need to do it and i feel like this is a rather easier way to marinate your turkey we're going to pour the melted butter on top of the turkey now you don't have to melt your butter just want to let you guys know that you don't have to ha melt your butter. I just find that it's easier to get the butter all on the skin of the turkey when you melt it. We're going to season it generously with the turkey rub. And you want to make sure that you season every part of your turkey. I don't like when people season their turkey and they don't get every part. I like to get every part of my turkey, okay? We're going to drizzle some butter on the other side as well. You're going to flip it over. Drizzle some butter on the other side. And you want to rub the butter in. Make sure that the skin of the turkey is saturated in that butter. And that's what's going to give your turkey that nice golden brown look. Okay. The color of the turkey is one of the most important things to me. That may sound superficial, but you want your turkey to be nice and golden brown and beautiful. That's also what gives you that nice crispy skin and we're going to sprinkle a little bit of seasoning onto the turkey and you might not even use all of that seasoning you might could save that seasoning we only probably use about half amount of that seasoning um i allowed it to sit in the refrigerator and marinate for three days and the reason why it has that dark color Look like my turkey is dark skin now. The reason why it has that dark color is because the cool air darkened the meat and also the seasoning darkened the turkey meat. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to remove these turkey pieces, the gizzards and the heart and the turkey neck. And we're going to just place them in a bowl and we're going to sit them aside. I don't use canned turkey on Thanksgiving. I never use canned turkey. When I'm making turkey wings, turkey legs, turkey anything, I like to make homemade turkey gravy. Homemade gravy is always the best route to take, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to chop up our green peppers and our onions. Now, these two green peppers here, two of the green peppers that we're going to be using, we're going to chop them up. You don't have to chop it up into small pieces. Just chop it up a few times so that it fits into the cavity of the turkey, about that size right there. So chop up your two green peppers and your one onion into those sizes, about medium sizes like that. Okay, um, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees because we're going to be getting ready to roast this turkey and you're going to stuff the turkey with the green peppers and the onions that we just chopped. Okay, and this is the way I stuff my turkey here. Stuff it like that. And you can stuff it with whatever vegetables you're using. Like I said, some people like to use carrots and celery. I just like to use green peppers and onions. Um, everything that I put on my whole turkey is what I put on my actual turkey wings. If you guys remember my turkey wing video, you will uh, see that I'm using all of the same ingredients. Okay, seasonings and all. Now, with your other onion and green pepper, you're going to dice them up into really, really small pieces. And we're going to be using this not only as our turkey bed in the oven bag, but for our gravy later on, that's going to add additional flavor to our homemade turkey gravy. Okay. 
So now we're going to get our Reynolds oven bag. And we're going to get our flour. And to the bag, we're going to be adding one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. That's all-purpose flour. We're going to add one tablespoon of that. And that's going to prevent the turkey from sticking to the oven bag. You're going to give it a nice shake, 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 shake. But you want to make sure that majority of the flour is at the bottom. You're going to add your vegetables, whatever vegetables you're using. I'm obviously using green peppers and onions. And you're going to add all of the vegetables that you chopped up to the oven bag. Okay. And now my friend Tina is going to assist me in placing a 13 pound turkey into this oven bag. So we're going to put the turkey in the oven bag. And there's a few things that you have to do before roasting, aka baking your Thanksgiving turkey. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up. And it comes with a little thing that you can tie it together with that comes in the pack. So we're going to seal it together with that. And what you're going to do just to make sure that some of the air get out of the bag is you're going to cut six half inch splits into the top of the oven bag. Okay. That's just to let the air get out. But you don't want to cut them too big because you want to keep that moisture, most of it, in the bag so that you can get your turkey nice and juicy and moist and tender. Okay, that's the purpose of putting it in the bag. So if you cut the splits too big, that'll be defeating the whole purpose of putting it in the oven bag. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place our turkey in the baking pan. And we're going to be baking this on 350 degrees. Now how long you bake it, some people um, use a thermometer and they stick the thermometer in the thickest part of the turkey, like the breast or the back. And if it reads 165 degrees, that's when they know that it's done. Um, but I don't, I don't do that. You can follow that chart right there. I only let mine cook for about two hours. When you're making your turkey in the oven bag, it really cuts off the time, the cooking time, really reduces the cooking time. So now for our gravy, you're going to get a small pot and we're going to add our turkey pieces to this pot. We're going to add one tablespoon of butter and we're going to create our slurry. So what we're going to do is we're going to be adding six tablespoons of flour to a bowl and we're going to add our chicken stock to that and we're going to stir it up so that there's no lumps in our gravy. That flour is what's going to help thicken your turkey gravy. Okay, so stir this up. Add your six tablespoons of flour along with your chicken broth. And you're going to give that a nice stir until it's nice and smooth like that. We're going to be placing this pot over medium heat. You can cover it with a lid if you want to to make sure that the meat get nice and tender. We're going to be adding approximately four to five cups of water or broth. Or you can use a combination of both. I use about three cups of water and two cups of chicken broth. Okay. And then you're going to add the slurry. And you're going to let it simmer on medium heat. Just let it simmer and let it go until it thickens. If you don't like your gravy extremely thick, then just cut it off before it gets too thick. Don't allow it to simmer all the way down. Here is our turkey after two hours. This is a 13 pound turkey in the Reynolds oven bag and it took two. Oh, look at that turkey. Oh, the color from the butter, nice and golden brown. Look at the skin of the turkey is nice and golden brown. Don't that look like Thanksgiving right there? Don't that look like autumn? Look at that. 
look how beautiful and golden brown a turkey is and it only went for two hours that's it guys about two to two and a half hours I think I timed it about two to two and a half hours now we're gonna remove the turkey and you're gonna see that there's some juice that the turkey created we're gonna be adding that to our pot of turkey broth this is turkey broth is gonna turn into gravy and that's going to give our gravy additional flavor that's the natural juices that come from the gravy gonna add the green peppers and onions as well and that's gonna result in a really delicious gravy try this out guys you're gonna absolutely love that gravy so here is our nice golden brown turkey let's chop the meat up and let's look at how tender this meat is look at this guys look at how tender and juicy the meat is look at that look at that right there the meat was extremely tender and juicy look at this ah oh, look how white the meat is look how white and tender that meat is and guys when i bit into the turkey you can taste the flavor of all the seasonings that we use deeply embedded into the turkey and that's why we marinated it for three days because the seasoning seeped all the way down to the core of the turkey because you don't just want the skin or the top of your turkey to be seasoned but you want the the meat to be well seasoned and to taste like something and that's what happens when you allow your turkey to marinate but look at that meat guys oh it was so good. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. Okay. There go your turkey. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I hope you guys follow it step by step so that you can enjoy this delicious Thanksgiving turkey like me and my friends did. But it was absolutely delicious. And you can tell. Just look at the juice. Look at the juice right there at the bottom. Look at the juice of the meat. You can tell it's tenderness, not dry. It was very, 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 very juicy. Very, very juicy turkey meat. This is the reason why a lot of people don't like turkey for Thanksgiving because they don't know how to make very juicy turkey. There's a turkey wing, nice and juicy and brown, well seasoned. Mm, 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 mm. It was really, really good. Smoking hot too. Now that's our dark meat right there. Look at that dark meat. Look how juicy and tender that dark meat is, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Look how tender it is. Nice and juicy and tender. Look at that. Now our gravy is done. It's nice and thick. We allowed it to simmer down. Um, I don't like my gravy extremely thick, so that's why I cut it off at this point. That's the level of thickness that I want my gravy to have. And look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Guys, that was the best tasting turkey gravy that I've ever tasted in my life. And this is why it's best to do it this way instead of getting the turkey gravy out of the can. Just no good. So we're going to chop the tender turkey meat up. And here's a little presentation. And then we're going to pour the gravy over it. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Happy Thanksgiving. This is the way Philly Boy J makes a Thanksgiving turkey. Peace.